Yo, what up, my tubers? We're back for some more drafting of the Double Masters Phantom Drafts here on Magic Online. Thanks for tuning in. Hit that like and subscribe button. We'll jump into the pack uh, where we opened a Deathbringer Liege and a Fire Song and Sun Speaker. Uh, this Liege is pretty good. Definitely could first pick it if we wanted to. Other good cards. Falconer, Domestication, Mentor, Pontiff's fine. There's an Aristocrat here. Coiling Oracle's very good. And then, of course, the Cryptic Spires. That's in every pack. Um, hmm. <sighs> Do I want to take Deathbringer Liege first pick and then maybe take one of these white or black creatures alongside it? I mean, honestly, I'd rather just take the Coiling Oracle and go some sweet ramp deck, as always. But I guess I've done that the last few times, so... Maybe we try to focus on a two-color strategy this time. Maybe take the Deathbringer Liege and... I mean, I could take the Pontiff. But I feel like the Falconer might be slightly better. I plan on probably wheeling, like, the Aristocrat and whatnot, so... Yeah, okay, I'll first pick the Liege. Uh, follow that up with which one of these other white cards. I guess the Falconer is probably the strongest overall. Move on to the next pick. Yeah, probably just going to take the Basilica now. Not much going on here anyways. I got a Hoopoo, Analysis, Dreg Mangler's Dece, Pride Mage is good. But given what we have to start off, I can't see just... Not taking the Basilica. Ooh, into a Blood Artist now, and maybe hopefully wheel the uh, Call of the Feast. Blood Artist has been super, super good for me. Mm, yeah. Uh, I think the Black-White strategy is what? The Sacrifice strategy, or like the, the Aristocrat strategy. So like Blood Flow, the Connoisseur, Call of the Feast, the um, Cartel Aristocrat or whatever that we passed earlier. But yeah, that's a that's an easy Blood Artist there for me into okay not too much thrive is kind of cute when you have falconer but i don't think that's the card we want to be taking here could take the lotlith troll abzan's probably not bad and this does have plus one plus one counter synergy not really much else in this pack anyways unless i wanted to pick the cryptic spires which is not bad mm. i guess the troll's uncommon though so Maybe we take that just because it's harder to pick up and we'd regret it more if we didn't. Disfigure's good here over effectively nothing. Not my favorite removal spell, but it's cheap and efficient. Good enough for me. Una's Prowler. Nope, we'll just take one of the Call of the Feasts here. There are some ways to reanimate in this format. Or actually, is it just the... Uh, what is this foil? What the heck? That looks super weird. Do you see that? When you zoom in, it goes back to OG art. I think that's foil. <laughs> anyway. Uh, I think there's like Extract to Darkness. Oh, there's Unburial Rites in this format too. So a couple of uncommon ways to reanimate. But eh. I think the safe pick here is just the Call of the Feast. Oh, this is a nice pack now. So... You probably think that Aristocrat's the right choice, but I think the correct pick here is the Vampiric Rites. This card has been an all-star in this style of deck just because it gives you um, a way to neutralize removal, of which there is plenty of in the format. Most importantly, this is an uncommon, so it's going to be harder to pick up than any of these other cards. So I think taking the rights here makes sense. Looks like Black White's pretty open anyways. I'm not sure what cards we're looking for the most. But I think this is a fantastic start to it, so... Good, good, good. Okay, next pack gives us... There's an Elite here, that's kind of medium. Knightly Valor is kind of medium. Yeah, we'll just take the Spires. Could take the Augur Spree, I guess. Oh, you know... Hmm. I guess Mardu is actually the color of the Aristocrats. Because in red, you can pick up, like, um, Hissing Iguanar. If you're lucky enough, you can get Judith and that type of thing. So keep an eye out on some of the red cards. But for now, we'll just stick to black-white straight up. 
On Earth would be good. Archer would be fine. This is an easy aristocrat, obviously. Are there many more token producers besides Cult of the Feast? Can't really think of any off the top of my head. Oh, these are just white. They're not even black. They're just white creatures, so... Can't double pump them with the liege, sadly. Uh, not going to be playing any of these cards, most likely. Connoisseur... Mm. I'm not big on Connoisseur. I'd rather take the Dreg Mangler here in case we end up in Abzan. Mangler surprisingly solid. Yeah, maybe a Thrive as well. Probably not playing that. Yeah, I guess we could still be playing some amount of green, right? Lot with Troll and Mangler, not terrible. And again, Thrive has synergy with any of the uh, Outlast creatures in the format, which there are a few. Definitely haven't done this strategy before, so this will be an interesting take on things. We opened a door in the Siege Tower here. Mimeoplasm, another fun one. Probably just going to be taking Blood Artist here. I don't think we want Doran. I think Blood Artist and like another Basilica are probably right. Ranker's good. Willing's good. Yeah, for sure Blood Artist as one of the choices out of the opening pack too. I mean, this is like a 3-mana 5-5, five five, I guess. Just a little bit hard to cast. But I do feel like I want to stick with just straight up black white for now. So yeah, blood artist for sure, and then um, Basilica here for the other choice. More aristocrats. What else? What are we looking for here? No, not connoisseur. I guess we can take supernatural stamina. That's. I mean, that's a. Not the greatest card to second pick, but there's nothing really else in this pack that we would want. And this is good with sack outlets, so it's also a cheap uh, cheap trick in a pinch. Yeah, I'm in for that. I would think you would want to take that like 7th or 8th pick, but <laughs> there wasn't anything else in that pack anyway, so. Nice. Here, that's a pretty easy relief, Captain, I feel like. Carrier Thrall's okay, Spy's okay. This is just way too good to curve into, especially, again, with any number of these uh, Outlast creatures, because we'll probably end up getting a couple of the uh, the two ones that give First Strike as well. So, like, curve out with small creatures and then pump them all up. Kind of nice. Ooh, into a Vampire Sovereign. This is one of the five drops I was definitely looking for. There's a Gave in this pack, too, actually. Hmm. That's kind of interesting. You know what? I think I'm going to go with the Gave here and maybe indeed look to be the Abzan deck. This is a strategy I haven't done before in this format, but uh, that seems good enough. To oh, pfft. I was going to say that seems good enough to take, but then we get a Judith here as well. Well, we're going to take that one. Another card that's way, way too good in the uh, uh, Aristocrats deck, so. Okay, we're open to some ideas. Oh, not that one. We've got a possible green splash. We've got a possible red splash. Into another Aristocrat here. So the, the, the plan is to baseline, just take all of the good black and white cards. And then if we find... Mm, I guess there's no other option. Yeah, okay, well. God's Willing, Spy. There's an Iguana for the red deck. It, it really feels like, to me, the red has more synergy with our black, though, you know? Two Blood Artists, two Aristocrats, Judith and Hissing Iguana can just ping people out of nowhere. Whereas there, the, these are more 1-1 one, one counter-based synergies. So even though I have more good green cards, I think the red actually pairs better with what the black-white is doing. Yeah. 
And I mean, in a pinch, we can always just splash a couple of green cards. I don't know. This looks better to me overall, though. There's the door in on the wheel, but that's okay. We'll just take the gods willing. Definitely want to pick up one or two of those if possible. Very, very interesting. There's a connoisseur. I don't think we really want that, though. Do we? I mean, I guess one. Uh, if we're playing the aristocrats, it's it's nice to have some more sack outlets. That nah, that's fine, and it would be good in the green deck as well. We could sack like the dreg manglers for extra value. Sure, sure, sure. In a format with this much removal, I'm hesitant to run a creature like this. But this is more like a like you don't want to go all in on it. You just want to have it as an excuse to sacrifice a creature if your opponent targets something else. You know. Another Connoisseur, probably taking that over Strands of Undeath. That's a late uh, Sidraxis Spectre. Fireblade Artist, maybe not too bad here. What are we missing? A little bit of fixing, maybe? Right, Valor again. Good news is we still have one more pack um, to round out our playables. So hopefully we can find a couple more good pieces. As we get a Settled Beyond Reality and I guess a Disfigure? Ugh. Could also just take another Cryptic Spires. Or maybe we take Severed Strands. Hmm. Yeah, this is really not the pack we were hoping to open. I think Settle is a clear, easy pick, and then the secondary is something that's uh, just whatever. I'm okay just taking another land. Carnarium. Ooh, Revelark. That's a nice one. Bugler would be good. There's the Unburial Rites. Ah, this... Revelark seems way too good in our deck. Way too much value. Creatures in this format need to generally be pretty good or get some amount of value because of how much good removal there is. Ah, nice. Another Relief Captain, too. Fantastic. Okay, Black White is getting there. Not sure about splashing the artist, but I guess again it does have synergy. Let's put that green in the sideboard. So we're at 20 playables right now. Any of these cards that don't fit? Well, all of them look pretty good. Probably could use another token producer. We haven't seen too many Call to the Feast, even though it's common. I know I passed one, I mean, but that was when there were two in the pack. We'll see if we can get another. Carrier Thrall versus Doom Traveler, those are nice. Let's take the Thrall here, I think. Uh, maybe, maybe making a 1-1 flyer is better. Eh, let's do that, we'll take the Doom Traveler. Leads to more potential broken curve outs, right? Where we can go like one drop, two drop, three drop relief captain. Although I guess, presumably with a couple of tap lands, we might not be playing something on curve always. Looks fun though. All right, after the Doom Traveler, we get past another Carrier Thrall and another Doom Traveler. Uh, could take the Oracle here, too, if we wanted to splash that. Mm, no, we'll just take another Doom. Another Troll, another Disfigure, another Dreg Mangler. Yeah, some combination of uh, Green, White, Black was certainly super open, too. I guess we'll just take another Disfigure here. 
Maybe I'll just keep the red to a really minor splash for the creatures that ping. Let's see, that's 22 playables. How many red sources would I need here? Like five or six? So if we put both of these cryptics on red and then run like three mountains, would that be good enough? Surprisingly, there's our first Bondkin. Also a couple Winged Steed Riders in the pack, but we're not really targeting our creatures. This is more for like the green-white heroic deck or whatever, or the red-white. But, I mean, we have two Relief Captains, so the Bondkin definitely makes sense. Uh, I think Lash is a really good sideboard card. Maybe it's best in the green-white decks as well, though, where you're targeting yourself a lot. I guess we could just take another Cryptic Spires here instead. We'll play that. That's quite a few tap lands, though, for what's trying to be more of an... I mean, I'm not super aggressive, am I? No, this is not like a super aggro deck. Hmm. All right, anyways. Do we want to splash Legion's Initiative 2? So since the majority of our creatures are not red, this wouldn't pump up their power. Unlikely. No, we're not going to be playing any of those. Don't need another Hyena Umbra. Don't need another Supernatural. Ah, Carry a Thrall. That's nice. We'll play that. Already have a God's Willing, so would rather have just the two drop instead. Yeah, I mean, there were a lot of open lanes, it feels like. I don't think we ended up with a bad deck. I am guessing, though, that the green, white, black deck would have been better. I mean, we saw so many good green, black cards going around. We have quite a few of them in our sideboard. It's possible that I just got, like, hooked into white, whereas I should have been green, black, X. That's the thing about these formats. You're always going to end up with enough playables, so you really need to choose the right lane correctly. As we get our third Dreg Mangler for the sideboard. So should we go? Should be able to go 16 lands pretty easily here. Uh, with double Karoo and our pretty low curve. I guess it could be all right to not splash the Iguanar, but if we're already splashing Judith, it's probably fine to do this. All right, let's figure this out. Do, 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 do. So probably two more mountains. That would give us five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten white, five, six, seven black. We need to go up more. Six, seven, eight. Why don't we get room for 11 lands? What the heck? Hmm. Hmm, hmm, hmm. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. One, two, three, four, five. I mean, I could, in theory, go down to four red sources. Dang it. Hmm. I almost wonder now if it's better just to actually cut these two red cards, but they seem a little bit too good. All right, we'll try it like this. The, the red might be a little bit hard to cast, but uh, if we do draw red cards without any red mana, at least we uh, only have two of them in our in our deck, so... Not too many dead draws. Oh, you know what I should actually do here? Maybe I should have more untapped white because we have two white one drops. So maybe I want to alter the... Well, no. Hmm. We want them on white red, I guess, because that way Judith doesn't overlap with the swamp. That's fine. Odds are, though, we're not going to be playing Doom Traveler on turn one because we only have four untapped white sources on turn one by doing it like this, but I think that's okay. 
again, I don't think this deck is trying to beat down anybody um, as quickly as possible. It's not like super aggro. Anyways, let's go to round one. Okay, on to round one of this um, Double Masters drafty. We are on the play. Hand looks all right. We've got all of our colors. So we get to go turn one Spires, turn two Swamp and Carrier Thrall, turn three Spires and Artist. Little aggro nation here. Hope the opponent's not playing another fast deck. Green, black, nice. It might be worth it to play the Swamp this turn instead of the uh, instead of the Tap Land, so that I can also hold up God's Willing. Grapple with the past and hitting a Swamp. Okay. Yeah, so they're playing a Ramp deck, so we're definitely want to probably going to want to take out our disfigures for this matchup and bring them some more aggressive threats, I think. If I take out the disfigures, I can bring in like... Hmm, Wingsteed Riders? Actually, I guess I don't have that much to bring in. That's too bad. Evoke Moldrifter. It's a good draw. I don't know if I'm supposed to be holding open this God's Willing, because I could have played the Cryptic Spires and still hold open Supernatural Stamina, but Stamina with Aristocrat and Blood Artist seems a little bit too good, you know? Alright, smack in. Go ahead for the Disfigure here. Drain them for one. Need to kill them before they can start getting their huge haymakers online. Like once they get to six and seven mana, they can uh, really put out some bad threats. Whoa, that is a surprise. Liliana's elite though, that's good for us. Another land was not an ideal draw. So how much damage can I deal this turn? If I sack the Thrall, give Aristocrats pro-black, drain them for one, attack for two, three, four, uh, not quite good enough. All right, and we'll just attack with both, fire off the stamina here. Slurp, slurp, slurp. And now we can just start sacking creatures every turn to the Aristocrat to effectively hit the opponent for three. If we can find like one more creature, we probably win the game. Any spell, really. Either snipes, hopefully. Or is this villainous wealth for a small amount? Because they still have five cards in their hand? Psychic Symbiont, okay. That's fine. Ooh, does that win? It's very close. Okay. Oh, they just gave it up. So we would hit him for four, then we could sack the Thrall for two damage, then like the Blood Artist for one more. So 
We had them at one on board with that. All right, yeah, we're going to cut the disfigures versus them. And I guess maybe just get in like another stamina. So Hyena Umbra does not work with sacrifice effects, at least I believe. Totem Armor says if it would be destroyed. So I can't like put a, th a Hyena Umbra on my Blood Artist and then sack my Blood Artist. That doesn't work. Sacrifice is a completely different thing. That being said, Hyena Umbra is still decent as a way to blank one of your opponent's removal spells. And like I said, I don't think we need, we need the Disfigures versus them anyways. Disfigures mainly a nod to us having some interplay versus other uh, creature decks. All right, on the draw here for game number two with a pretty good looking hand. Just need to find a couple of lands, but this will pop off if we can. Perfect. Nice. No disfigures a good sign. Three, three, haste. Okay. I will race. Let's go. So Aristocrat sacrifices other creatures. Blood flow can sacrifice any creature, even itself. Sidisi? Oh no. Whenever one or more creature cards are put in your graveyard from your library, create. Wow. Well. Ooh, you know what? I think I actually relief captain here now. Because we have settled beyond reality. Let's go like this. And then just plan on settling our Relief Captain in there, Sidisi, next turn. Oh, they bricked on Creature again. They did mill a Villainous Wealth and a Damnation. Alright, I'm just going to take the hit then. Oh, well. I guess the opponent was off it. <laughs> they had some very good cards, but uh, sure. We'll take it, and we're one to know. Okay, round number two here of this Double Masters. On the play with an okay hand. Would love to find another creature before playing out the Relief Captain. So let's go turn two Bondkin here. And then we can level it up and play Basilica, I guess. Ooh, they milled a lily! Yikes, that would have wrecked us. And two lands. They didn't take either of those lands. Uh, okay, that's actually better. Kill that. Basilica. Smack for two. Main phase grapple now. Wow, they are on like a reanimator deck. Extract from darkness there too. Yikes, for sure. And our draws here are not great. It's a pretty weak uh, relief captain, but I think we just need to pressure, pressure, pressure. Before they can start getting their haymakers online, you know? Their deck looks scary. Mm, they have some decision to make. What's your play? Starting off with another shaman, okay. Uh, milling, changeling, rejuvenator, and an heart. 
and then playing another bounce land. Damn, I wish we had Flicker Wisp in our deck. Flickering one of those lands would be so good. That's a good draw too, speaking of. Guanar. Do I want to trade off my Relief Captain? I don't actually know if I do. I think we hold it for now. And just attack for three. Okay, they have five mana, green, white, black, and blue. Seven cards in their hand. Kind of scary. On Burial Rites, the Changeling, but they didn't have enough creatures in their graveyard to gain life, so that's good. Hmm. Another land's not great. Okay. Let's play out the Revel Arc. This is definitely signifying what I have, but I think this is right. So I could do two things here. I could pump up the Relief Captain and bring it back, but we'll just kill off their Spider. Yes, yes. Nice, nice reanimate deck from them, though. They have extract, they have unburial rights. One, two, one, two, th three. So if they reanimate their changeling here, they don't get to gain five again, though. That is super suspect. Just pass. All right, I'm going to pre-combat Cartel Aristocrat. I'm not actually sure what they can have here. Okay. Oh, it must be Coatl and another removal spell or something. Well, this is going to be really good for us. I let First Strike Damage resolve. Okay, then I sack the Bondkin. Ping them for one. Then Revelark dies. And now it gets back two creatures. Yeah, they're just dead here. Or one creature, whatever. Sweet. Okay. Things are working out, let me tell you. Um... Looks like another Supernatural Stamina might be worth it. Uh, maybe I should just be running both Staminas in the main deck anyways. They're just so good with all the sacrifice effects and any creature that has some value when it dies or whatever. I mean, they showed us like a quad also. And some three ones. It's not like Disfigure would have been bad, but... Mmm, finally got a bad hand. Gonna have to ship that one down to six. Oof. Yep. Down to five we go. Wow. Keepable, but not very good. We'll pitch a mountain here, and I guess stamina over God's Willing. Oh. <laughs> okay. Two drop, please. Oh, that's right, we have that thing in our deck, too. Uh, I mean, I don't want to play Judith without protection open, but... Nice, they grappled and hit three land. And they took the planes back, sure. Yeah, I guess I don't. I don't have an option here. We just have nothing going on, so I just got to get the creature online, even if that means, you know, no protection and they could just kill it. Uh, 
They are ramping. Oof. Big oof. I guess the hope is that they go for a removal spell. And I get to God's willing. Oh, wow, they hit. They just YOLO'd off a Extract from Darkness and they hit Teneb off the top of their library. <laughs> okay. Seems realistic. I wonder if I'm actually supposed to not even play out the Relief Captain this turn and instead use God's Willing to scry for a uh, untapped land so I can settle their Teneb. Man, what a brutal hit. Yeah, so they can... Uh, steal my blood artist. Oh, I didn't even notice what they hid in their graveyard. They hit a Carador. Oh my god. They are top decking like a champion. Wow. Yeah, the Glowspore Shaman hit this freaking Carador thing. Jeez. Okay. Well... Huh. I guess I lose, question mark? So let's, God's willing here. Pro black, I need to find an untapped land. Connoisseur. Huh. That is disgusting. Okay, didn't mill another creature this time. Yeesh. Okay, so they hit me for six. We'll see if they want to grab my blood artist. They probably do. And again, I need to draw an untapped land here. And that's hoping that they have nothing. So exile that, flicker that. Hope they don't have a counter. Spell pierce or something. Mana leak. All right. Yep. They were tapping way too quickly. <laughs> How lucky. I don't think they scryed, right? They just randomly hit Teneb off of the freaking darkness, so good beats. Let's uh, run it back and not mulligan to five and not have them mill a 6-6 six, six flyer like that. On to game three here of the round, number two. And already starting off with a mulligan. Very, very unlucky. <laughs> okay. Got to go down to five here again. Two one landers in a row. Kind of frustrating, but what are you going to do? Um, can I afford to pitch a land? Or rather, can I afford to pitch a spell here? I guess we can keep Call of the Feast plus Relief Captain. Because we're planning on going tap land, tap land anyways. Ah, uh, so unlucky. Ooh, that's nice. All the Karoos with uh, fatties that they can discard now. That's a good play. Yeah, they discarded Ashen Rider. Love it. Now, opponent has a really good reanimate deck, for sure. But we've low rolled two times in a row. 
mulligan to five, mulligan to five. So, good beats. Yeah, their deck is sweet. I wonder how many reanimate effects they have. Because we know they have Extract from Darkness and Unburial Rites. But uh, we don't know how many others they have. Really hoping to hit an untapped white source next turn just to slam Relief Captain. Because maybe there's a chance if we just put a little bit too much pressure on early. And they don't find a reanimate quickly, then... Uh, we might be able to get them. Body double, rampant growth, island milled. Wait, what did they take? Oh, glow spore shaman, sure. Love it. Yeah, their deck is awesome. Probably going to end up sacrificing one of these uh, tokens end of turn, but it looks like they have the yep the way to copy. Good beats. I mean, if we rip, like, Judith or something off the top, we can potentially get them if they don't have another reanimate effect here, uh, which they did. <laughs> Double Ashen Rider. Uh, we can also draw Settle Beyond Reality this turn, exile one of the Ashen Riders, and flicker our Relief Captain. Okay. Not dead, just dying. I approve of their strategy. I think they've high rolled the last couple games versus us, and we've low rolled, but can't really uh, say nothing but good things about what their deck is trying to do. Man, ah, so sad though. Two mulligans to five. They high roll on the reanimate. Makes me feel sad. What's going to hurt me now? I mean, even if they just reanimate the 3-5 and gain 5 life, that's probably not beatable for us. 2, 3, 4, 5, so, so it looks like they might just forsake an alchemy here and hold up counter magic or something. That is exactly what we wanted to draw, but I don't know if I run it out anymore. Or maybe I don't have an option to. Maybe I have to run it out. Can I win if I don't cast Settle this turn? This had to be our best possible draw. That was a pretty lucky top deck. But I have a feeling it's not going to work out for some reason. They just passed with 7 mana and 5 cards in their hand. Why do I feel like I want to wait a turn? Can I afford to, though? That's the question. Yeah, I I guess I just kind of have to go for it. I mean, we saw one mana leak put in their graveyard. 
That worked. Okay, hold up. Holy smokes. So maybe their plan is to actually just uh, forsaken alchemy. Or coaddle, I guess. Hmm. I could also just attack with the aristocrat. Go pro black, and then if they coaddle, pro green. But then I would have to sacrifice two random creatures. But this doesn't look like a... A terrible attack. Yeah, I think we got to go for it. They did, in fact, have Quaddle. No surprise. Okay, that's fine. It's not great, but... Yeah, this is where having a Blood Artist or a Guanar or Judith, so we have four of those things, would have been so good. But, again, I high-rolled with the Settle Beyond Reality, so probably shouldn't complain on that front. Let's see if they have another reanimate effect. Lily! Yeah, 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 that's good. Mill to Neb. Probably just get back their spider this turn, I would think. Safest play. Because it's a green creature, so it doesn't overlap with the Ashen Rider. What a deck! I didn't see what they put back. They returned Carador, okay. Hmm. Guess I just have to pass again. I mean, <sighs> eh, maybe I have to attack Lily and kill Lily. I guess if I don't do this, then the Lily just uh, eats all my one toughness creatures anyways. So give white and blue protection, kill the Lily. They get to play Carador, which costs one, two, three, four, five less. Yeah, and now they get to play Spider from their graveyard, and that's probably just a concede from there. Fantastic deck. Love their deck. That's the best reanimate deck I've ever seen in this format. Maybe the only one, actually. <laughs> ah! I'm just sad we didn't get a good game because we mulliganed to five both times, you know? Oh, way too late to the party. Yeah, this is not winnable with the Carador. Alright, I'm good to scoop it up there. It would take them a little while to kill us, but without dealing with the Carador, they would just bring back all of their creatures in turn. So, And notably, we lost our one removal spell for something huge. I mean, yeah, we do have Liege in the deck, but... I don't think there was a way to win that. They were just going to start playing, you know, Teneb next turn. And then they were going to reanimate two things the following turn. So, good beats. GG's. On to round number three of this Double Masters Drafty. Sitting here on the draw with a hand that doesn't look too appealing, but I think is probably okay to keep. Obviously, we would love to draw some intermediate game plays, but... That's not a bad one. So we get to go turn one Spires, turn two Doom Traveler, Basilica Bounce the Spires. And then we can go three, four from there, I guess. Yeah, that's not a bad draw, too. That definitely makes our Connoisseur a lot better.
Red green from the opponent. Go ahead and smack down for one. Into good old connoisseur. Lightning Bolt, the Connoisseur. All right, that resolves. Not a big deal. We can get back uh, the Connoisseur with Revel Arc eventually if we want to. Ooh, as they missed a land and passed. So the only downside here about not playing the Spires earlier is that I don't actually have double white for the Basilica now. Uh, sorry, for the uh, Captain now. But we still have, obviously, a fine play this turn of another Connoisseur. Our opponent's just missing land drops over there, though, so might not actually matter anyways. Yeah, okay. Well, dang it. We've had so many non-games with this draft. Feels bad. Like, obviously, it's nice to win when you get a non-game, but it's not what we want to do. Would rather get some nice grindy games. All right, let's, uh, again, just take out a Disfigure, bring in the Stamina. I mean, they're playing red-green, so I'm sure Disfigure is decent, but I think the Stamina is probably just the best trick you can have for this type of deck. Move on to game number two. Hand is fine, though not very exciting. Turn one Traveler, turn two Thrall. Now that we've drawn another Swamp, or rather another Black Source, this one untapped. I will say this is not a very <laughs> scary curve in Double Masters. Because the big decks go real big, so. Just waiting to see them play something super scary on us. No plays, huh? Uh, okay. Well, let's attack for three. And I think here we're going to play Spires out instead of Basilica. That way we can hold open both um, God's Willing and Disfigure. Yeah, and I think I'm going to go ahead and just God's Willing our carrier. Namely to keep it, but also, more importantly, to scry for some action. Because we really need to find some other creatures. Like Stamina, sure, a good trick, but not what we need here. Oh, that's annoying. They get back Bolt. That's a good draw. Okay. Uh, yeah. Hmm. You know what? I'm going to go ahead and give them back the bolt. They were willing to bolt the carrier thrall last time, but that was more because they wanted value with the living lightning. But I kind of like this. Oh, that's a good draw, too. Now I don't even have to play out the revel arc this turn, which would be their immediate lightning bolt target. They might just fire it off on the Thrall now. Beautiful. Okay. I still think we wait a turn, though. I feel like playing out this Call of the Feast is still just slightly better. Seeker of the Way. That's pretty annoying. Into a Totem Armor on that. Very nice. Ooh, there we go. Fantastic draw step. Exactly the card we were looking for. I assume they're going to block one of the vampires. They don't get to gain any life here. Unless they cast another instant. 
and we get to drain them for another one. Play out the Revel Arc. Okay, hope this is good. They hit double green, so we might see an Altasaur in our future. Worst case scenario, they have... Oh, I was going to say, worst case scenario, they have a... Uh, a uh, Anger of the Gods, wipe my board, exile them all, and then gain a bunch of life with Seeker, but... That's not too scary, actually. Oh, they have another play. Yikes, travel preps, okay. Hmm. So what I could do here is put the Blood Artist on the Seeker, and then the Revel Arc on the 3-3. Three, three. First Strike would kill the Blood Artist, then the Revel Arc would come, uh, not come back. It would die and bring back the Thrall and the Blood Artist, but it's probably just better to take 10 here. They have Travel Preps again next turn for the Seeker of the Way, which is the biggest problem. Yeah, it's not great. That Seeker gains a lot of life here. So the plan is to chump the Seeker with the Doom Traveler. They're still going to gain minimum of six. I get a 1-1 one, one Flyer, though, and drain them for one. So they go to 13, and they're going to go to 12. Hmm. Okay, well, our hope here is that they don't continue to draw non-creature spells to trigger the Seeker of the Way. Because if they brick one turn, we kill them. If they brick this turn, we kill them. Okay. All right, I think we have lethal then. Oh, well, now we definitely do. Yikes. Finally get to do some fun Judith things. Nice, let's go. Let's go. All right, not bad. Pulled off a two and one. Played against a really nice reanimator deck in round two, of course. Lost that one, but man, both of our games we lost, we mulliganed to five, so. What could have been, I'll never know. GG's to the opponent there. And yeah, fun little one. Um, nice, different uh, take on this format. Usually I'm drafting those five-color ramp decks, which I think are great. But this is to prove that there are some creature-based strategies in the format that you can do. Uh, I think my most successful archetype is green-white, the 1-1 one -one counters, and the heroic deck. But this was a good uh, good test of what the aristocrat deck can, can do. Sad we never got to do anything with the Deathbringer Liege. But yeah, good stuff. Good showing. Hopefully you enjoyed that. Hopefully this is a good uh, good uh, learning experience so you guys can go out and do your own double masters in paper since it's releasing this week. Or I guess it will have released yesterday when this video drops. But anyways, thanks for watching. Hit that like and subscribe button and we'll see you back tomorrow for some more. Peace out.